I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, is all the liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Absolutely. Ms. Beal? Here. Ms. Gilman? Here. Ms. Hayes? Sorry, present. That's okay. Ms. McCover? Here. Ms. Perlamas? Here. Ms. Celerico? Here. Ms. Tortorello? Here. Mr. Weinstein? Here. Ms. Fuller? Here. Mr. Forum? Thank you, Ms. Ruba. Welcome, everyone. It's nice to see so many people here tonight. I'll just take a moment to say my own family's here. So hello, everyone. Uh, it's nice to start seeing this room filling up again, and we are very hopeful that it can stay that way. We, are. Um, we have a number of good things that we're going to be talking about tonight. Our Teachers of the Year, uh, our Educational Service Professionals of the Year. So we're excited to see everyone here tonight. I will just take a, a moment of personal privilege. As most of you know, tonight is my last meeting. I did not choose to run for re-election to the, to the school board this year. <laughs> my daughter is cheering that it's my last <laughs> meeting. <laughs> um, so it is a bittersweet moment, uh, but I do just want to take a moment to thank my colleagues on the board for having the privilege and the opportunity to serve with them, Dr. Stefankowitz. It has been a wonderful four years. Uh, to the new Ms. Truba and to, to Ken, who, you know, is still with us, um, to thank everyone and to the teachers and the staff and the administrators of this district who work so hard always, but in particular over the last two years during COVID, it has been uh, an unexpected experience. I think no one could have ever predicted what we would be working on, but it has really been uh, the privilege of a lifetime to be able to serve like this. You know, for those who know me personally, I've spent most of my life working for the government or helping people sit on this side of the table and not necessarily thinking that I would be the one sitting here. So it has been a really unique and special privilege to be able to be part of it. And I thank the folks of Ocean Township for having given me the opportunity to serve. So thank you. Well, I will uh, at this time see if our student representatives, um, Rio Jones, uh, and Marlene are here. Hi, yeah. wonderful, come on out. It's nice to see you guys. Come to the microphone please and we'll get our update from our student representatives. Good evening board members, educators, parents and fellow students. At OTHS, many activities, sports and clubs are still occurring normally. Last week, the senior class had a free movie and bonding night with hot cocoa bar with toppings and cookies. Over 80 kids came and many donated unwrapped gifts to our giving tree. Winter sports have begun and several already have been seeing wins. We are in the middle of the spirit week with themes of holiday sweater and pajama day coming up. Junior class did their holiday cupcake sale. They sold so many cupcakes and spread sweet joy. There is an annual coat drive hosted by the National Honor Society. Even though everyone has been going through tough times, all students should, should all students try to make the best of it to socialize and participate in different activities and clubs. I hope that the new year brings good health and the ability to have more social events at school. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Following up with that, um, I'm talking about like the more visual performing arts part of the school. Um, the fall play was a hit and went really well. And it was apparently one of our top selling fall shows. The Trauma Club has already figured out their spring show, which will be Greece and auditions for that will be after break. Um, a lot of people are really excited and interested in it. Mrs. Worthwine held Spar and Dancer auditions last week to get prepared to dance during the basketball games. Um, the choir concert will be January 18th. Mr. Kernison has worked very hard with the students to get them ready for the concert. And the winter band concert was just last week and was very successful. And Mr. Titmus was very happy with the outcome and everyone enjoyed it very much. Uh, he also provided a live stream for people who couldn't make it. And Mr. Timmis will also be having pit band auditions after break as well for the spring show. And I'm very excited for the spring to see what the visual performance arts side brings to the table. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
very much for those updates. So exciting to hear about all the things that are happening with the schools mm -hmm. the first time too. Um, at this time, I'll turn things over to Dr. Stefankiewicz for some updates and some uh, recognition for tonight. Well, absolutely. Thank you for the last time, Ms. Fuller. Appreciate that uh, introduction. Uh, Thank you lots under the table tonight. Absolutely. I'm sure you will. Um, first thing I just wanted to announce, and thank you ladies for your wonderful announcements. I, I am here to announce that I will be playing Danny in the <laughs> uh, performance of Greece. So uh, just when you announce auditions, just make sure that's known. So no one, you know, is, you know, you know we, we don't want to upset too many people, you know, so anyway, so just, you know, thanks for that. Um, so we are so thrilled and excited this evening. Uh, to have with us. This is one of our uh, favorite meetings of the year, uh, not only because it's several days usually before break, but we get to welcome uh, our educators of the year uh, who are here with us this evening. And um, just to explain the process uh, a little bit, um, and, and just also a reminder that this is uh, something that uh, was brought back to the district about now three or four years ago. Um, after a long hiatus, and I think it's been a very positive uh, 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 program that we brought back. Um, and and uh, we appreciate you know the work with uh, our um, education association and Mr. Riley and the folks uh, leadership of the TOEA who worked with us to to bring uh, this program back. Um, but each school uh, in the district goes through a nomination process, and nominations come from. Uh, parents, they come from students, they come from colleagues, and um, uh, those there's a committee that's formed within each school that contains previous winners, parents, other you know staff members, and uh, 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 a selection is made. There are two individuals per school. One person is a, a classroom teacher. And the other is an ed services professional, which could be um, usually anyone other than a classroom teacher. Um, and, and it really runs the gamut. And you see that, I think, I think uh, you see that here this evening. So uh, tonight, it's my pleasure to introduce our 2021-2022 Educators of the Year. And what I'm going to do is we have a lovely uh, um, certificate for you. Now, what will come with this as well and I will speak in theory right now because it hasn't happened for a couple of years. But in the spring, there is a scheduled luncheon of all the Monmouth County uh, Teachers of the Year and Educators of the Year. That is still scheduled. So hopefully that will happen. I'm also happy to say that last year's Educators of the Year, there's actually a luncheon scheduled for them the week before your luncheon. So we're all hoping that those all happen. And I'm very excited about multiple lunches that I will be attending. But I hope that they will actually take place this May uh, with a wonderful uh, celebration and formal plaque and all that other fun stuff. So that's coming. But for, for tonight, hopefully you will accept um, this recognition and uh, the adoration of all of us and your, your administrators and the kids and everybody here online. And, uh, and it's a wonderful thing. So with that, um, I'm gonna start with the high school, if that's okay. Ms. Kasuba is here and, what, and, and we're gonna, you know, we'll go over there, right? And we'll go over to the top and um, affectionately known as, and uh, we'll go from there, all right? So uh, our teacher of the year, at uh, OTHS, our high school, is uh, English teacher, nine years in the district, uh, Tara O'Neill. Tara O'Neill. Excellent. Yeah, well, then we'll, get one big, we'll get one big happy shot of everybody, right? Okay, the Ed Services Professional of the Year for uh, the high school is our media specialist normally, but last year I can also say that Donna probably taught many other things other than the, being the media specialist. Ch jumped in, as so many people did when we needed her in, in variety of places, but uh, Donna Emmerich, our, our, our service professional. Here. And now, uh, Donna has been with us for 14 years in the district. And so thank you, Donna, for that. All right, uh, intermediate school up next. So our intermediate school teacher of the year 
if you've ever walked down the halls of the intermediate school and you've seen these extremely strange looking objects um, that look like somewhat, they look somewhat alien-like, would you agree, Mr. Amato? You would agree. You're going to agree no matter what, right? And they're yeah. very bright. Yeah. And they're very bright. Um, these, these incredible science uh, uh, projects and uh, that, that uh, are growing things that we hope are not going to eat us later mm -hmm. in life. But, um, but it's very exciting to see. But um, our Intermediate uh, edu Teacher of the Year has been really, I think, um, at the forefront of innovation of education in the intermediate school, always looking for new ways to engage and excite uh, her students. And we really appreciate all that. Been with us now for seven years, science teacher, Megan Edson. Megan. <laughs> Megan, did I, did I hear a story that your, your dad like flew here from Texas to be? Oh, all the way. That's what I was. Okay, so let's say welcome y'all. <laughs> sure. That's awesome. Nice. Oh. All right. Uh, Ed Services Professional of the Year. Um, as I'm sure all of you can imagine, the nurses' offices in our buildings are um, places of heavy activity um, throughout the year. And if, if um, I wish um, most of many of our nurses have already been honored, I wish we honestly we should honor them every year because they're just doing amazing things as as many people are. But uh, the support that our nurses get, not only from our administrators, but from the folks in the nurse's office uh, is incredible. And I was speaking with Karen Kazajinski, the nurse at the intermediate school, and she said to me, I don't know if uh, I, I, meaning Karen, or uh, our other nurse, Twee, would have made it even close to this far if it wasn't for the support they have in their office. So it is very exciting to um, announce our um, Ed Services Professional Year of the Intermediate School is uh, our uh, administrative assistant in the nurse's office with us for four years, Laura Garoni. Laura, thank you. So let's go to OTES now, shall we? So at OTES, um, one of the, I think one of the most exciting things that we've done as a district over the last several years is the uh, addition of our preschool programs. And we always say that if you're having a tough day, just go visit the preschools because there's no way that you can leave those rooms without a smile on your face. So one of the reasons you leave with a smile on your face is because you see such unbelievably happy children. And one of the reasons why they're so happy are the educators with whom they work. So at OTES, um, uh, one of our preschool teachers um, has just uh, shined and done an amazing job as, uh, as they all do. Uh, but with us eight years in the district, preschool teacher extraordinaire, and I think Lauren, we spelled your name correctly, or I did at least, uh, Lauren Eggie, preschool teacher. Congratulations. And Ed Service Professional of the Year. Uh, this individual has been in the district with us two years. Two years. It's like dog years, though, right? <laughs> though, you, you picked two great years, Ellen, to be the nurse in an elementary school, right? Uh, seems like 14, right? But uh, I'll tell you, you know, there's no, there's no person who, who commands that office. And I think Mr. President will attest to this more so than, than you. Um, the perfect uh, combination of authority with 
uh, kindness, empathy, and compassion for your students. It's perfect. So it's great pleasure to uh, honor Ellen Hornberg, our school nurse at OTES. As I'd say, it's just perfect. <laughs> we'll have to go see the nurse. <laughs> Could be like a tear duct problem or something. Okay, let's go with, uh, what do you think? You want to shoot for it? Nick, let's go with Juana Masa, shall we? Yeah. Save the best for last, right, Claire? There you go. All right, Juana Masa. All right, our teacher of the year. Uh, once again, I really have problems spelling people's first names, so I'm really sorry about that. But uh, we got better as the as the day went on. But anyway, um, once again, you know, when you walk down and you, and you and you just see kids in classrooms smiling, singing, laughing, um, you know that uh, there's great things going on in that classroom, right? And I can say that about so many of our staff members. And what's really hard, I think, for these committees is to pick one person every year, right? But um, but you know, every once in a while. Um, uh, the cream does rise to the uh, to the top. So, um, Wanamasa, do you want me to say it, Tammy? How many years you've been in the district? Okay, twenty three years in the district. Twenty three years. You've been you've been waiting very patiently, but very uh, very honored to announce Tammy Ford as the Teacher of the Year for Wanamasa. What do you say, right? I mean, what do you say? So, so you know, when you walk through the halls of Wanamasa, it's just, you know, where's, where's Officer Rich? Where's Officer Rich? Where's Officer Rich? Where's Officer Rich? And it's just, um, you know, and, and our, our security staff does amazing work and they become part of the fabric of the school in which they work. And, and I think Officer uh, Rich, uh, or, or, you know, um, has, has just done that, you know, uh, he, he, the kids just love him, and, and, uh, and we love him too, and it's amazing things. He's been here seven years, um, Rich Joe, Security Monitor at Mount Austin. <laughs> It should be said, though, that when they say, where's Officer Rich, it's not because they can't find him. Yeah, because yeah. They, want to they, want, they want to find him. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't recognize you, Rich. I got to be honest. And last but certainly not least, like, uh, they side rocks, right? And, and, um, and that's a wonderful thing. So once again, I, I'll, I'll say, you know, you walk down um, the, 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 the first grade wing and, um, you know, there's just such uh, excitement and enthusiasm that come from the kids. And I love when I walk around the building with Miss Pelea and, and go, to first, for, go to that wing because you just know that there's going to be kids engaged in having tremendous amount of fun in what they do and where they have so much fun every day uh is with our next recipient so do, do, do you want me to say it tammy how many years you've been in this it's okay 16 years uh with us in the district tammy garrett uh, teacher we were at, at wayside uh just uh tremendous work and we appreciate everything you do And really, last but not least, um, I think your office is in the same wing now, isn't it, right? That's, that's why it's so exciting in that first grade wing. Um, the work that um, our related services folks do is unbelievable. And the work of our speech therapists, uh, I believe, is, is second to none anywhere in Monmouth County, certainly. And Jen, you and I have had so many conversations about the, the, the hazard pay that you probably deserve over the years from, you know, getting kicked, getting, you know, hair pulled out of your head, all that, all in, all trying to teach our kids um, and provide them the assistance they need to, to just be better learners and be more confident and, and do the, you know, just be who they are, right? So um, your work is extraordinary. Uh, as is all of the folks that are here this evening. So uh, our ed services professional, 20 years in the district. You split the difference, Ooh, right? 21. Tw 21? 
Yeah. Oh, 21 years in the district. <laughs> um, speech language uh, speech language specialist, Jen Walk. principals and their winners in front of the step and repeat. If they're here, they might as well be here. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's something wrong. Oh, you got your fan club back. Yeah, I got a couple more. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out upstairs. Dr. Savankwitz is mask said nice, and now he has one on that says naughty. That's correct. I just noticed. That. Yes. Well, you know, I, I both live inside me at any one given moment, and which one will come out? I don't know. Are we supposed to read more into that? Yes. Yes, you should. Okay. Um, An audience. Let's see. Good night. Good evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Um, so the next thing I just wanted to uh, mention was obviously talk a little bit about um, how things are uh, right now and um, how things are uh, in the schools are, are you know, they're, they're very uh, good and people are doing good things. But, you know, I, I would be lying if I didn't say we have some concerns about the direction of COVID. Uh, we have definitely seen an uptick in cases, and um, it is, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's been, it's been tough these last couple of, uh, last couple of weeks. We've definitely seen that increase. Uh, I think, you know, uh, a bit of good news, however, is, is that the, you know, the State Department did come out with um, the ability to shorten the duration of uh, quarantine. So we're down to seven days now with a test at, at five, which is good, and 10 days if you don't test. We are still looking into the, the test to stay, and, and incredibly, on Friday, the CDC did come out with their sort of, we're working with schools. Now, the DOH hasn't done anything official yet, even though they, I think the governor announced earlier this week that they are looking to, to do some piloting of that, of that program. Um, you know, we still are, are interested in a program like that. I think the biggest concern that we have administratively and our nurses have is if we do have to get into a every other day or daily testing regimen, how would that work? It's, it's potentially a lot of kids and just logistically could be very difficult to do. Um, and, and the idea of putting that on the parents is difficult because not everybody's going to have that access and that becomes an equity issue. Um, and right now, uh, you might have to wait around three city blocks to get tested because it's a little, it's a little rough. Um, and, and so there's still some logistical things with the test to stay. But I think the lowering of the uh, quarantine time does uh, put us in a place where any student who does have to quarantine right now really would miss about, uh, I don't think there's any scenario where they would miss more than five school days at one time, which is still too many, I will say yeah. that. But at least it's better than 10 school days, you know. So, so uh, it did cut that down quite a bit. Now, uh, on the agenda, um, we were reminded, because we did the original uh, safety plan back in June, that uh, every six months or so, we have to kind of give an update on um, 
where we are with our school uh, safe reopen plan. And where we are with our school safe reopen plan is the exact same spot as where we were six months ago. Uh, we are doing the same things as we've been doing. We have not you know, changed anything. And our plan says that we'll follow the guidance as set forth. So it doesn't require any change based on you know, the new uh, changes that have come out. But um, you know, it's, 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 you know, we are still following the same procedures and, and, and following the same guidelines. Just, you know, it, we have definitely seen an increase in activity, and we have certainly seen an increase in activity amongst the vaccinated. And, and so that, that, you know, gives us a lot of pause. Mm -hmm. I do think that, um, you know, we are absolutely of the mind that our schools work best when they are open and functioning and our kids and our staff are in school. But as we haven't, you know, I think we're all looking to January and looking that it could be, um, could be tough. So I just want, you know, I, I want to let the board know, and, and I'm going to put this in my letter on, on Thursday, that I think as we head into January, that people just have to be prepared for all options that are out there, including virtual instruction. And, and I'm not saying that's something we want to do in any way. I'm not saying that something is imminent, that we are doing that anytime soon. I'm just saying that, you know, the way things are, it is not out of the question that that could be a possibility as we move forward. So, um, you know, uh, that is going to be, of course, a last resort, because we know that kids being home is not best for kids. And so, we're going to do everything we can not to have that happen. Uh, but we need cooperation. We need cooperation. We need people to keep, keep their kids home if they're not feeling well. We need people to follow the guidelines that I set forth out every single solitary week. We need people to do it. And look, we get it. You know, we're coming into the holidays and there's going to be people getting together. There just are. And, 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 and you know, that's not a bad thing. I mean, come on, right? Um, but... Um, you know, I think we just have to be mindful. And what I would really recommend and what I recommend is just that everybody upon coming back should do their best to try to get tested once they come back. We're not mandating it or anything, but uh, I think that would really be very helpful if people could try at least to take a rapid test, something that would uh, give everybody an indicator of whether uh, they need to stay home and, and, and they shouldn't be in, in, in school. So I think that uh, we're, we're, you know, I think we're all a little... Um, you know, I think we're all hoping that this year would be different than last, and it certainly is, and it certainly has been. We have been in school for the most part, and that has been very good, but we're certainly at a place now with statewide cases and county cases where we're, we're, we're kind of right back where we were a year ago, and that's, I think, frustrating for a lot of people. So, so just, you know, I really just want to say just be prepared, and uh, we're going to do all we can on our end, and we appreciate everyone's cooperation on, on uh, outside of the school district. So questions about that or thoughts about that in any way? Yeah. I have a question. Um, you know, some, some districts, I know you, you just said we, we're not mandating that you test before we come back in January. But, you know, North Jersey districts, I, I forget if I've seen any in Central or Southern Jersey, but I've definitely seen it in North Jersey. Um, the school nurses or the superintendents have actually said that in a letter, like we really encourage you um, to, th to, so twofold is my question. Are you going to be physically saying those words, like, please, parents, test your kids? It might be a good idea. And also, um, you know, there's that, the free test from the state. So, you know, people are waiting six hours to even get a test today at urgent care, like you said. So perhaps if parents know a little more about the free spit test that gets delivered to their home, like now, then maybe they could get it in the next few days and then they can have it and they can ship it off to the state right before they come. Mm -hmm. I think it would, it's like a missed opportunity for those folks that don't get the free tests. And I, I just don't know if anyone, if everyone knows about it rather. Right. Um, yeah, it was definitely my intention to say something in my letter this week to to encourage people to consider testing before they return. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, and, and we can certainly uh, try to give people the, 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 you know, where they can do that, the, the best way to do that. Um, you know, we, we did start getting uh, some of our rapid tests from from um, from Rover, but it's not nearly enough. You know, it's, it's, it only represents a, a percentage of the population of the school. So, I mean, that would be, that would, to me, if we would have gotten one for everybody, we could, 
we could have said, hey, uh, here, pick, pick yours up a couple of days before uh, school starts. Yeah. But it's, Some schools it's are doing that, right? Like across yeah. the country. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't have nearly don't enough have to do that at this point. But we certainly will encourage people to uh, to get tested before they before they return. Absolutely. Especially if they travel. Especially if they travel. Is it worth sending out something on the, the free tests from the state? I'd have to look into that a little bit more. I, I don't have a lot of information about that, but if you if you have something, you can send it to me. Sure, I can. We can send yeah. it. Yeah, every state resident, including kids, can get free tests, and they ship it out to you in 24 hours. Great. And then when you ship it back, you get your results in 24 to 48. Great. Governor announced it. I forget, like Saturday or whatever. Okay. I'll send you. I'll send it to you tonight. Right now. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Okay. On that. All right. Last but not least. I'm going to turn it over to Amy McGovern to uh, kind of finish up the superintendent's report with a special proclamation. Yes. Um, so normally the board president hands out any um, resolutions that we have to, at the end of the year, but unfortunately our board president happens to be the person that the resolution is for. So as the immediate past board president, I'm going to do it um, this evening, I thank your family for saying as I screamed to them as she was telling them to leave and I was telling them to say. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to read that um, we have a resolution adopted by the Township of Ocean Board of Education, Township of Ocean, New Jersey for Janice Fuller. Whereas Ms. Fuller has served our school district with dedication and enthusiasm since 2017. And whereas she has many positions of importance, including president of the Board of Education for 2021, vice president for 2020. Oh, sorry. All right, there it goes. Um, chairperson of the Community Liaison and Co-Curricular Student Activities in 2017. Chairperson of the Financial Management and Resource Services Committee from 2018 to 2020 serving on the Negotiations Committee, Technology Committee, Instruction and Education Committee, Personnel Committee, Public Relations Committee, District Secretary, uh, Security Committee, my not secretary too, and the Reopening Task Force Committee. And whereas she has long been considered a committed, committed and caring person whose leadership and high standards has remained steadfast throughout her tenure as a member of the board, she has earned the respect of everyone associated with the Township of Ocean Board of Education for her valued experience and guidance. And now, therefore, be it resolved, the Township of Ocean Board of Education hereby expresses its sincere gratitude to Ms. Fuller for her invaluable services to the Board of Education and wishes to extend her all good wishes for good health and happiness as she ceases active participation as a member of the board. Just so you just so you know, the odds were the odds were even money that she was gonna cry <laughs> yeah. as, you, as you were talking about it. So uh, you're a cryer. And she's a cryer. And I just want to say, you know, for the um for the three years that we've been on the board together, it's been um, an honor to be your vice president. And I just want to say that, um, look, I'm getting emotional. Oh, <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm but I'm a softy. Your, your glasses are foggy. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, but uh, you always, you know, uh, one thing I always loved about it, you always, you know, you're, you're dedicated, you're prepared, you're energetic, you're enthusiastic, you really care. The heck about this school district, the kids, and uh, and uh, you know it's uh, just something. It was a pleasure to be with these last three years, and I love the the good conversations we had and some of the fun we had. And and I do appreciate the fact that when I made an attempt to tell a joke or did something funny, you did not gavel me or anything like that. So I really do appreciate that. Another, so I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. And Thank if you. I could also add to uh, Janice, it has been an honor and a pleasure getting to know you these past years. Um, you've taught me quite a bit about government, things I've never known before. So I really appreciate that. And serving as president, especially this past year, was not easy. And I just want to let you know that you are appreciated and uh, we wish you all, all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate the resolution. I appreciate all of the words. Thank you. I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to miss you. I, I'm going to miss you all. I'm going to miss being here. Although I think some of you question if I'm being sincere, but I am. I'm going to, I'm <laughs> well, going to you are just this. a link away. You are just a link away. <laughs> and, and now we've established and that I can always, I can in perpetuity continue to participate virtually as a member of the public. So I appreciate it. But thank you all. There also is a plaque being, being made. 
the so plaque. You'll, you'll come back for the plaque. Right, I'll come course. back for the plaque. Come back for the plaque. I appreciate that. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mrs. Weber. You're welcome. The and key will be is if anyone can get me to cry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had you. And, and the Fuller family can be dismissed. Wait, I want to say, I didn't get to say anything. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so echoing what everyone already said, thank you for your service to the schools, to the students. Um, I'm here in part because of you. So thank you, I think, yeah. for um, <laughs> encouraging me to run and helping me. You've been a mentor, you know, um, throughout the whole entire process. And I think you're going to have we have big shoes to fill with you leaving. Um, I'm going to miss you. Hope you find something good to do on Tuesdays. Um, and I'll see you at the beach club. I'll see you at the beach. <laughs> yes. like thank you, Mr. Morello. Thank you all very much. Very much. I appreciate all of it. Thank you. Does that conclude your I don't report? know. Is there anything you need to remind uh, me of yeah, one no. last time? I think we're good. I think that concludes my report. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you. Now you guys can leave. Now, yes. <laughs> Thank you, family. I appreciate your staying. I told Dad you get you should get ice cream for stay. Ooh, scoops. <laughs> <laughs> I think scoops is still open. Uh, maybe guys, not. Bye, yeah. Probably close. It probably closed. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. I love that. Uh, right. Thank you. Moving on in the agenda, um, I'm sorry, so to turn to Ms. Truba for um, any update that you might have. Sure, um, IT or technology and facilities, there's no real update for tonight, uh, but I do wanna let everybody know that our comprehensive financial report it will be due to the state on February 5th. So we're working, up, uh, working on closing uh, audit information now. So we should have that done over the next three weeks. Thank you. That's all. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Ruba. Um, the computer just locked, so if anyone can't see me, that's why. But as I turn it back on, um, moving on to public comment uh, on agenda items. Of course. Thank you. Uh, the following are series of motions to be brought by the committee chairpersons. All motions have been discussed at recent public work session. Some motions have been approved at a public work session, and the minutes for approved items are posted on. The district website at this point in the meeting we will now conduct the first of two public comment sessions the first session will be open for public comment on agenda items only the second session will be at the end of the meeting and can be on any topic would anyone from the public like to comment on any agenda item at this time first we will recognize those who are with us here in the auditorium and then we will go to those joining us from home i would like to recognize mr Haddon, my former Thank colleague you. who's joining us tonight it's on, it's on. okay uh, my name is Joseph Haddon, 813 Roselle Avenue in Wanamassa. I was going to ask about the LEAP grant, but uh, i got to say, I don't remember the uh, resolution last year for the outgoing members being so nicely worded. I don't remember standing <laughs> ovation. Actually, like so many kind words being said by... And, you know, quite frankly, at 10 and a half, I literally had big shoes to <laughs> on, on the way out. I'm just saying it's, you know, it's all right. I'll get over it. It's fine. It's, uh, um, as far as the agenda question, oh, Ms. Fuller, thank you very much for your service. You. Despite my griping and, and jealousy and so on. Pleasure serving with you. It's a pleasure serving with you. And, um, the board is going to miss you, but you know we'll work on the rain. I'm sure. Um, the, the leap grant reference in here uh, is that as it was, that's that's dead, right? And you have to resubmit. Is that well, that? no. What happened, Joe, is that um, we you know we received 150 thousand based on an initial uh, right. project that was that was uh, projected to be about 500 thousand, and then over the course of time. The pandemic, what have you, that has grown to about seven hundred thousand. Right. And then there was also a lot of concerns about uh, water and flooding at the at the at the test site uh, area there. And we had met with we uh, Tina and I went back and we met with uh, Dave Brown and we met with the folks from the town and we really felt that it was not uh, the best direction to go. And then we did ask the state if they would allow us to change the scope of the grant and apply it to a different project that would be a shared right. project and they yes, would not allow us to do that. So, so I saw the reference in the attachment that it was, uh, they encouraged you to apply for 2022, it doesn't, so you're just starting over from scratch then if you're gonna apply. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Because we do see yeah. some, we do see some areas that we could do. Just once again, we would have loved to have applied that money to. Right. Yeah. Do no, that, I remember they, when that started. They wouldn't so. let us do that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, seeing no other public comment here in the auditorium, Ms. Conway, is there anyone uh, joining us uh, virtually who would like to make a comment or ask a question? I would like to thank you for your service to our school community, and there are no further commenters. Could you state your name, please? Thank you very much. Help desk. Thank you. Help desk. 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 Uh, we'll move on to approval minutes, Mr. Weinstein, please. Uh, thank you, Madam President. HTTP. Um, I move That's to approve right. the meeting minutes in accordance with the Board of Education bylaws number 0168, mm -hmm. recording of board meetings for the work meeting executive session meeting on December 14, 2021. Second. Thank you. I'm sorry, who second? No. Okay, thank Cittarello. you. Smooth and Ms. Field. Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Governor? Yes. Ms. Perlamas? Yes. Ms. Tellerico? Yes. Ms. Tortorello? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. Ms. Fuller? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein. Mm -hmm. um, moving on, financial management research services. Ms. Gilman? Uh, Ms. Tortorello. Tortorello. Oh, 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 Ms. Tortorello. Sorry. <laughs> I'd be glad to be better. Thank you, Ms. Tortorello. Uh, I have uh, a whopping 17 items for approval this evening. I'll uh, talk as fast as I can. 6.1, the following resolution certifies that budget balances at the end of November 2021 were adequate to pay all remaining obligations of the 21-22 school year and that account groupings required by the state have adequate balances. The board is also certifying that the independent reports of the treasurer and the business office are in agreement as per the below and attached. 6.2, Move for approval of the attached resolution dated November 2021, covering appropriation transfers in the 2122 General Fund 10. Said transfer shall result in shall result in no change in the total original appropriations. 6.3. Move for the approval of the following paid items as listed below. 6.4. Move to approve the following security drills for the month of November 2021 as listed below. 6.5, move to rescind the fiscal year 21-22 LEAP Challenge Grant Award. LEAP Challenge Grant Award of $150,000 to the Township of Ocean School District. 6.6, move to accept the Emergent and Capital Maintenance Grant Award in the amount of $81,175 for fiscal year 22 as per the attached. 6.7, move to approve the fiscal year 22 Elementary and Secondary Education Act Grant in order to utilize the carryover funds from the fiscal year 21 project period as noted below. This notification is required under ESEA compliance regulations. 6.8, move to approve the revised transportation jointure agreement with Eaton Town Board of Education with the Township of Ocean Board of Education to act as host as per the below. 6.9, move to approve the revised transportation jointure agreement with Long Branch Board of Ed, with the Township of Ocean Board of Ed to act as host as per the below. 6.10, move to approve the CRRSA ESSER II Consolidated Grant Award Allocation for fiscal year 2021, school year 2023, as per the below. 6.11, move to approve the ARP ESSER III Grant Award Allocation totaling $3,332,229 for the project period of March 11th, 21 through September 30th, 24, per the attached. 6.12 moves to approve the following companies to provide optional accidental and personal sickness indemnity and life insurance policy coverage for all district employees at their own expense for the calendar year 2022. <clears throat> 6.13 moves to approve the following companies and standard sharing and hold excuse me, hold harmless agreements per IRS regulations to provide tax shelter and annuity 403B, Section 529 College Savings Services, and Section 457 plans to all district employees for calendar year 2022 with Omni Group serving as the third party administrator. 6.14 moves to approve the annual, moves to approve the annual 
school district cafeteria 125 plan. The plan allows for the carryover of up to $570 of unused balances to the next year with the total contribution limit of $2,850. 6.15, move to approve an agreement with Statistical Forecasting LLC to perform demographic services for the Township of Ocean Schools in accordance with the attached proposal. 6.16, move to approve the agreement with Tender Touch Educational Services LLC to provide, to provide Title I basic skills services to Ocean Township students attending Yeshiva Kateratora and Vet Yaakov of the Jersey Shore for the 21-22 school year in accordance with the attached agreement. And last, 6.17, move to approve a contract with Invo Healthcare Associates to provide occupational therapy services to cover an employee who is on medical leave from 12-6-21 through 4 7 at the rate of $82 per hour for 35 hours per week in accordance with the attached. May I have a second? Second. Steele? Yeah. Yes. Hold on, any discussion? Yes. Any discussion on anything? Yeah, um, 616. My question from um, the work session about how many students per school, what is it, <clears throat> Two thousand or $9,000 for the, each of the two schools, uh, how many students is that? And, and we are um, verifying address and all that kind of stuff and let's like the residents. Yeah. Kelly, Kelly's here, Alex. So let's yeah, say. Sure. 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 Yeah. Were you asking how many students this yes. includes? Yes. Okay. So. It's approximately, I don't have the numbers right off the top of my head, but I believe that they each have, I think one school has 12 students and the other school has eight. I can get you those exact numbers tomorrow if you'd like. And yes, we verify addresses. Okay. Okay. And just one quick, if I may, one quick mention regarding the, uh, the uh, ESSER 2 and the um, ESSER 3. So just a quick update, um, based on the, um, you know, the uh, presentation of ESSER 3 that we did last month in, in November, uh, we did um, uh, revise the ESSER 2 application to reflect the changes that we discussed, moving the equity and SEL coaches up to three and uh, applying more to the HEAC. Um, that uh, change was approved by the Department of Education. We also, of course, uh, submitted the ESSER 3 grant um, uh, on time, which was nice. And um, we are still waiting approval of, of that particular grant. So um, that's not unusual. Uh, no, everyone is still waiting for no, that particular grant. But I uh, just wanted to give the board an update. These are, of course, just approving the allocations, but just giving an update on where those those um, grant applications are. Thank you for right. that. I have a, a question. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what a tabletop drill is? Sure. I can tell you what a tabletop drill is. I'm not familiar with it. Okay, a tabletop drill is when we, uh, uh, you know, for the typically the administration from a school meets with um, local law enforcement and other officials, and they basically uh, kind of walk through different scenarios. It's not an actual uh, drill where you're acting something out, like a fire drill or an active shooter drill or something like that. You more, it's more of like a discussion talk through about different uh, scenarios and how you would handle different scenarios. Anything you'd like to add to that? Anyone? Did I do a good job explaining it? Yeah. There you go. I did a great job explaining it. Yeah. So it's, it's more of a conversation walk through, uh, you know, walk through without actually walking through. It's more of a, you know, a verbal, a verbal walk through than, a, than an actual uh, to plan how you would do things in the event of. And then typically you would follow that up then with an, with an, uh, an action type drill that you talked about and see how it actually plays, see out. How it plays out. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And, and uh, the emergent grant, the capital maintenance grant for $81,000, mm -hmm. uh, are we going to use that for a specific uh, purpose? H HVAC. Probably to to that HVAC. Is, you know, HVAC in the intermediate know. school. Right. So that'll help us pull less money out of the capital reserve. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Ms. Chuba. Okay. Ms. Beal. Yes. Ms. Bielman. Yes. Ms. Hayes. Yes. Uh, Ms. McGovern. Yes. Ms. Perlamas. Yes. Ms. Celerico. Yes. Mr. Dorello. Yes. Mr. Weinstein. Yes. Mr. Fuller. 
Yes. Ms. Fuller, I'm sorry. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tortorella. Uh, moving on, instruction, education, student activities. Let's go. Yes, there are seven items for this evening. Uh, 7.1, move to approve out of district private tuition for the 2021-2022 school year in accordance with the attached memorandums below. 7.2, move to approve the request of students to fulfill their clinical practice requirements during the 2021-2022 school year in accordance with the attached memorandums below. 7.3, internship, move to approve the request of district employees, college, university students to fulfill their program requirements during the 2021-2022 school year in accordance with the attached memorandum dated December 8th, 2021. The internship practicum hours will not conflict with their contractual work hours in the district. 7.4, professional development, move to approve the attached memorandum dated December 15th, 2021. Staff professional development activities in accordance with district policy 6471 and NJAC 6A colon 23A-7. The attendance at said activities is fiscally prudent and will promote the delivery of instruction and or will further the efficient operation of the district. Reimbursement for travel and related expenses shall be according to the Department of the Treasury guidelines in NJOMB circular 06-02 and 8-87. 7.5 out of school suspension, move to approve the out of school suspension report for the month of November, 2021. 7.6, move to approve the New Jersey Department of Education school self-assessment for determining HIB grades under the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights Act for the period of July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Copies of reports, five noted by school are attached. 7.7, .7, move to affirm the following harassment, intimidation and bullying, PIB incident summary reports for the 2021-2022 school year. The reports were previously provided to the board by the superintendent of schools. The board has reviewed the reports and affirms the superintendent's reports as listed below. Second. Okay, I have a second. Second. I'm sorry, who's second? Uh, okay, okay. Amy. Okay, any questions before I move on? Okay, Ms. Beal? Yes. Ms. Beelman? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Ms. McGovern? Yes. Ms. Perlarmas? Yes. Ms. Delarico? Yes. Ms. Tortorello? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? I'm gonna say yes to all except 7.2, I'll recuse myself. Uh, Ms. Fuller? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, Ms. Gilman. Personnel, Ms. Perlamas? Yes. Um, 8.1, move to eliminate the following positions, principal of special projects and programs, purchasing agent, bookkeeper position, and 12-month secretary. 8.2, move to create for the 2021-22 school year the following new positions, accountant, non-affiliated non position, purchasing agent, and two part-time instructional assistants. 8.3, move to approve revisions to the following job description for Director of School Counseling. 8.4, move to approve the following new job descriptions for Accountant and Purchasing Agent. 8.5, move to approve an unpaid family leave of absence for Kathleen Cocoso, Health and PE teacher at the Intermediate School beginning at the conclusion of her eligible sick leave, which is approximately May 17th through June 22nd, 2022. 8.6, move to approve an unpaid family leave of absence for Ronald Pearson, custodian one at Wanamassa, beginning of the conclusion of his eligible sick leave, which is February 28th through April 6, 2022. 8.7, move to approve an unpaid family leave for Susan Malta, English as a second language teacher at the intermediate school from January 18th through January 28th, 2022. 8.8, .8, move to approve an unpaid family leave of absence for Bonnie Zimmerman, instructional assistant at the high school from January 10th through January 31st. 8.9, move to approve Cheryl Cesario, an instructional assistant to shadow an intermediate school student to drama club auditions and rehearsals. 8.10, move to approve Alyssa Davis as a clerical substitute. 8.11, move to approve substitute teachers as listed below. 
8.12, move to approve John D. Covert as the interim assistant superintendent of school special services for the period of January 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2022 at a rate of $575 per day. 8.13, move to approve that revised contracts be issued to the following as listed below. 8.14, move to approve that contracts be issued to the following as listed below. And lastly, 8.15, move to approve a tenure recommendation for a teacher eligible for tenure during the period of January 1st through June 30th, 2022. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Truba, please uh, call the roll. Is there any questions on personnel? Jan, anyone? Um, I do. Um, just, just a formality. Um, I think Dr. Stefank, what you said for Mr. Covert, this is the temporary, you know, position. But when we approve him after January first, we will actually get a resume. Is that true? Resume was was on the agenda. I didn't see it. My bad. It okay. was in the um in the administrative. Yeah, it should have been listed in the, I think in the work session and in, in the administrative content. Okay, thank you. I didn't see it at all. My apologies. Okay. No worries. I thought we weren't getting it till the next hiring. So, nope. okay. Should have it. If for some reason it's, I pretty sure it's there. But if it's not there, just let me know. Well, we can, I'll send it out tomorrow. Yeah, and I'm. I'm if it's, I'll, I'll log on now. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? I'm not logged on under. That's oh, why. No, actually, it's not. I hate doing that. All right, sorry. Under under the work session. Thanks, Ms. Hayes. Yeah, the resume is under the work okay. It's under the work session. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ms. Beal? Thank you. Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Go ahead. I think Grace had a question. She had her hand up. I just wanted to make a note of 7.7. .7. I'm sorry. Back in July, we had changed the wording of the board affirming receipt of the superintendent's report for HIB, and that's not what the actual wording is right now. So I just wanted to make a note of that because we did agree as a board in July that we were going to change that wording to affirming the receipt of the superintendent's report, not that we were affirming the actual report. All right, we'll ask Ms. Trubert to take care of that, but we're actually in the middle of a, you know, the personnel agenda items. And right. we're about to get a motion and a second on the table, so we can't revert back to we'll the other items. It. We'll make sure it's fixed moving forward. Right, but procedurally, we're in the middle of a motion and a, and a second on a table, so. But we'll I don't, I don't, yeah, but. It's not, the, it's not the appropriate time within the, that can come up later, but you can't, we can't interrupt a motion and a second on a table for discussion of an item that's already been voted on, so. We can certainly address it, but at the appropriate time. It'd be an old though. business. Sure. Yes. 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 Tellerico. Yes. Ms. Tortorello. Yes. Mr. Weinstein. Yes. Ms. Fuller. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Carlamas. Policy, Mr. Weinstein. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I have two items. The first one is move to approve the second and final reading of the revised policies as listed below revised policies and an explanation for the revised revisions are attached. Uh, we made some, um, in a work session, we made some uh, changes. So we're approving uh, these um, policies with the idea that the um, changes that were discussed at our work session will be incorporated to them and we'll have a new edition of these that will be on file. Uh, oh, sorry. Can I get a second, yes. Ms. McGovern? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Beal. Yes. Oh. Any, uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Ms. Gilman. Yes. Ms. Hayes. Yes. Ms. McGovern. Yes. Ms. Columbus. Yes. Ms. Tellerico. Yes. Ms. Cordarello. Yes. Ms. Weinstein. Yes. Ms. Fuller. Yes. I think I have one more item. Anyway. The ninth, we have two nineteen. Yeah, no, twenty-three. Yeah. We'll have another item. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Governor. For, uh, move, move to approve the suspension of policy uh, 01, 0160 through a member participation of board meetings using electronic devices for no later than January 31st, 2022. See attached policies. Um, can I get a second? Second. <laughs> Is everybody in, in favor of that? Yes. 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 Okay. Anyone not in favor? You don't need a second roll for that? Number 10. No, everybody, nobody, nobody's abstaining or saying no, correct? All right. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein. Uh, public relations, thank you again. That's already been covered by Ms. McGovern. I appreciate that. 
I have uh, to move it. Have to I move. have to move it? Yep. Really? Yep. So I'll do it real quick. Uh, move to approve a resolution honoring the following outgoing Board of Education member, Ms. Janice Fuller. Mm -hmm. Can I have a second? Second. second. Okay. No, it's going to pass. <laughs> Might not. Ms. Beal? Yes. Ms. Billman? Yes. Ms. Hayes? Yes. Ms. McGovern? No. <laughs> Whoa. Just for fun. Oh. Okay. Uh, Ms. Pavlov? Yes. <laughs> Ms. Salarico? Yes. Tortorello? Yes. Mr. Weinstein? Yes. Ms. Fuller? Sorry. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yes. Stain. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. To balance out Ms. McGovern's note. <laughs> All right, thank you all again. Uh, moving on, old business. Is there any old business from the board? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I wanted to bring up use of facilities. I know we didn't have any today. Um, on the county, um, on the counties, or New Jersey State School Boards Association County meeting last night, that was quite the topic. I don't know if this is an old or new, but um, wondering if given the, I don't really have a position yet. I just would like to maybe discuss it yet at some point soon, if we would consider um, amending our use of facilities policies, given the rapid spread of Omicron and the positive cases in our area. This would, I mean, this would be new business, but if there's no other old business from the board, then we can just address it now. We can just discuss it in January, right? Yeah, so if your request is for this to be a discussion in January? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we can All right. discuss it now. So noted by Ms. Truba. And um, the special education numbers, I know Ms. Zona's here today. Was she going to provide us with any of those from last week or did you say she, we would find the information out? In we're, we're, yeah, we're gonna do that in January as well. Okay. Um, Anybody else? No? Hold on. Okay. I can look. I can look right now if somebody else has something for old. No one had old. We actually for new. Sorry, just that was new. So, is there any other new business from the Hayes or other members of the board? <clears throat> yes. Wait, hold on. I think that might be it. If I can find any others, I'll just email them. All right. Uh, that brings us to public comment. Uh, is there any public uh, comment on any item at this time? No one here in the auditorium. Ms. Conway, anyone from home? Madam President, there are no more commenters in the queue. All right. For the last time, motion to adjourn. Second. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.